I was lucky enough to go up to Newcastle recently and to the Lang Gallery where on display are lots of John Martin art. John Martin being my favourite artist, I thought I should do a little bit about the Bard, which I have a poster form in my room and I've had for a, a long time. But to see the actual painting was truly amazing for me. I didn't realise it was such a giant painting. So the Bard was painted by John Martin in 1817. And it's to do with the poem by Thomas Gray, which I think was written in 1755. And it tells the story of how King Edward I of England and his conquest of taking over the country of Wales in the late 13th century. And in those days of Wales, the bards, the professional poets and singers for the people, the Welsh people, were, well, I wouldn't say they were their leaders, but they, this is who people used to come to to get help, to get healing, to get wise words. These bards sang the songs of old and sang the songs that were magical. Because song, singing and songs are magical. The gods like to hear us sing. So the Welsh people obviously revered their druids, their these people that were kind of mystical, or were mystical, you know. They had a, a they were like druids because they gave us gave the people the wisdom. They knew the wisdom of the the way. They had a a code of how to live with the world and nature. But King Edward, he wanted all the bars to be slaughtered, killed, taken. And Martin's picture is about the last surviving singer, the last bard that was left. And so it's painted a scene of in the Welsh valleys, you've got the castle in the background, you can see all the king's men. <laughs> it looks like there's hundreds of them, possibly thousands, are coming to take this last bard who st stood on top of the cliff face with the birds and the eagles and the birds of prey flying above him. And it's like he, at first I thought he was singing down upon them, but I've been told since that he's actually cursing them. He's cursing King Edward. He's cursing the soldiers. And then he throws himself off the ledge, falling to his death. The landscape on this is just amazing, isn't it? You can see the waterfalls, the trees. And I was just going to read some of the extracts from Gray's poem. Ruin sees thee, ruthless king, confusion on their Bunnies wait, they are fanned by conquest's crimson wing. They mock the air with idle state, helm nor who backs twisted mow, nor even thy virtues, tyrant, shall avow to save thy secret soul from nightly fears. From Cambria's curse, from Cambria's tears, such were the sounds that over the quested pride of the first Edward scattered wild dismay as down the steep of Snowdon's shaggy side he wound with toilsome march his long array. Stout Gloucester stood aghast in speechless trance to arms cried Mortimer and couched his quivering lance on a rock whose haughty brow frowns over cold Conway's foaming flood Robed in the sable garb of woe, with haggard eyes the poet stood. Loose his beard and hoary hair streamed like a meteor to the troubled air. And with a master's hand and prophet's fire, struck the deep sorrows of his leer. Hark how each giant oak and desert cave sighs to the torrent's awful voice beneath. Over thee, O king, their hundred arms they wave, revenge on thee in wholesome murmurs, Breathe, vocal no more, since Cambria's fatal day, to high-born Holge's harp, or soft Llewellyn's bay. Enough for me, with joy I see, the different doom our fates assign, be thine despair and sceptred care, to triumph and to die are mine. 
He spoke and headlong from the mountain's height, deep in the roaring tide, he plunged to endless death.